Hi, this is uh, Dr. Diane Gayhart, and this is my online lecture on how to complete Cal State University Northridge's MFT hour logs. And I have been asked to do this by many students who uh, find it, well, it takes a time for them to get a hang of it. So hopefully um, you can uh, replay this to help you uh, get clarity in how to fill out these logs. Let's start by just mentioning where to find these. Hopefully you have found the, C the program's website, csunmft.net. You can also link to this directly from the department webpage. That, and, but you will find all the field, field work forms are on this website. So the first thing you um, need to do is to number your log. So your very first log will be log one. The next one is log two. Now, if you have two supervisors who are signing different and separate BBS logs at the same site, your you know, supervisor number one would be log one, and then supervisor two is log two. And when you get to um, needing to redo these, you know, you'll put supervisor one will likely be your log three, and then supervisor log uh, number two will be log four. Similarly, if you have more than one field site, you will never have more than one log one because otherwise it messes up your running totals. So if you have two field sites, you're going to do the exact same thing. Field site one is log one. doesn't really matter which one you start with. Field site two is log two. And this allows you to, um, uh, and then log three would be the first site again or whatever order you need it in. And you just keep going. The log numbers just um, tell you which order to do the running totals um, at the bottom. So that is why you can never have more than one log one, no matter how many sites or how many supervisors you have. So next you need to fill out the uh, top part of the information. You're going to put your name. You're going to put the date that you enrolled in the degree program. And then you're going to put your field site name and then the name of your supervisor. So if you have, like I said, more than one supervisor at a site, um, you can keep track of the logs uh, that way in terms of distinguishing the two. So here you can see um, that the uh, columns where we count direct service hours are highlighted. So in the first line here, you're going to put um, individual therapy. So that's therapy with a child or an adult. And you don't need to get any of these, um, and you will need up to 300 of these. So, so each column is a week, so you would put the weekly total for how many hours of individual therapy you providing therapy to a single adult or a single child, no one else is in the room, just the two of you, that's individual therapy. So process groups with individuals are when you are providing uh, and conducting group therapy and process-based group therapy means that people are usually um, uh, processing emotions, processing, you know, talking about relationship dynamics, but the, there is a group process going on. It's not just psychoeducation where you're, you're giving them content, giving them a lecture on, you know, how to parent or something along those lines. And again, you'd put all those group hours there. Then you have relational therapy, and this is couple or family, and you need a minimum of 200 couple family um, hours. And so if you're working with one couple or one family, you'd put it in the relational uh, line in terms of relational therapy. If you're doing a process group with couples or families, you would put it in the group. And again, a process group means you're talking about their emotions, their relationships, um, and not just doing psychoeducational, providing them with information. So then you have the alternative hour, and this is a unique category um, that's part of our uh, national accreditation, and you can have up to 100, so don't count over 100 of these hours towards your total of 500 hours. But this is when you're working on a reflecting team, when you're picking up the phone, calling a psychiatrist or a parent or another involved stakeholder or another involved um, a uh, professional like a pediatrician or a psychiatrist. And the purpose of these alternative hours is to encourage you to do uh, networking with the family as well as a broader social system and the um, service delivery system to have you be engaged and to be able to count those hours. So, but these are either on the phone or face-to-face. -face. It does not uh, count 
going online and searching for referral resources for low fee legal services or low fee psych psychiatric services, that sort of thing. So, but it has to be face to face or live, um, face to face or on the phone. So that, those are your direct service hours. And now we're going to move into your supervision. And so for accreditation, receiving live supervision where someone actually watches you do therapy and gives you feedback, gives you supervision on that is very important. It's, it's a much higher standard for training. So you will see, unlike the, um, the BBS forms that our, our forms have distinguished individual supervision case reports. So you're receiving supervision and here in this upper part, you're at your site receiving individual supervision, but you're just talking about cases. There is no video or no one's watching you do therapy. Then you have individual live supervision where your supervisor is watching your video, giving you feedback, or your supervisor is observing you in session with your client or behind a mirror watching you with your client or via video, something along those lines. But they're watching you do live therapy and they can hear and see you. Um, and then you have group supervision, case reports. So that's when you've got eight or fewer um, students in a room and everyone's talking about cases, getting supervision, but no one's showing a, a video. Whereas live group supervision live, at least one or more person in that group supervision is actually showing a video or being viewed by the supervision group doing live therapy. And that's live. So you don't have to be the, you know, you can just be observing one of the other interns doing therapy and giving feedback as part of that process. And that you're still getting live group supervision because you're going to be able to watch the sessions and you will find you learn a lot from those types of sessions. So that is how you count up your um, direct service as well as your supervision hours. And again, there's a total at the end of the week and you can see each column gets totaled and each row gets totaled. And here's just a quick overview of all the different categories we just discussed in terms of the individual therapy with child or adult, the process groups, then it's again, relational therapy with a couple or family, there's more than two clients in the room and uh, or two or more clients in the room and this may be considered roommates and even cohabitating couples of course and then you have process groups with couples and families which means at least two or more people in the group are related because then you have to deal with their relational dynamics this is, can may also apply to residential sitting settings where people are living together when the group is addressing how they get along with one another and working through relationship issues because they're in a residential setting. The same logic applies or may apply to certain school groups where the students are who are together 40 hours a week or 35 hours a week are working through their issues in the group and or family of origin issues through the group. Um, so these are the different uh, alternative ways that these uh, multifamily group hours can be counted. And this slide just gives us a close-up view of the alternative hours. So any telephone, telemedicine, such as uh, managing, talking to your clients, not about rescheduling, but managing a crisis or doing some kind of on the phone therapy or processing, um, as well as phone intakes, um, especially ones that are, you know, more involved in terms of asking what the pro presenting problem is, making sure you're the right, you know, 15 minute phone call to get information, make sure you're the right place, get them set up. Um, there's also the face-to-face -face or telephone client-centered advocacy, like we've discussed. Psychoeducational groups. So if you're just going to get up and do a great big parenting, you know, talk to 20, you know, parents who are going to just mostly sit there and ask a few content related questions that goes under alternative if you do reflecting teams which is a postmodern intervention where you know a couple of therapists are observing a session and give feedback that would be counted as um the one thing that these alternative hours don't include is that uh, any of your regular paperwork hours leaving voice messages doing yeah scheduling appointments that sort of thing um, does not count towards alternative, nor does advertising um, count towards alternative. So again, for this uh, close-up look at the supervision, you're going to either count individual supervision, case report means you're, there's no live video or live client, then live supervision is when you're using video, and um, the same works for group. And again, you don't have to be the one um, the group is observing. You just need to be a member of a group in which someone, real clients are being viewed in one format or another.
And then at the bottom, you get your supervisor's signature for each week, and you want to indicate if they're an AAMFT approved supervisor. So next, you're going to put in the hours that you're in, your 659P, Q, or R. And you're either going to do live groups, so live um, videos were watched um, during the class, or if no videos were shown, you would do case report for group, very similar to what you would do for your field site. And again, here you get your university instructor signature, all of whom should be AMFT approved supervisors or supervisors in training. So once you've completed all the hours in a log, you're going to add them up across in these rows. And you can see where you're going to take the eight weeks. You get the total hours. So if you're looking at this relational therapy, they got 22 hours, right? And then you're going to transfer that 22 into whichever, which these three, uh, five gray columns, you're going to transfer it over to the white box over there. So that gives you 22. And this is how we're going to count up our running totals. You're going to do that for all the different rows. So again, just to review, when you're adding the column totals, give you the weekly totals, and the rows are going to give you the type of hours, so then we can get your running totals for the hours you have maximums and minimums on. So finally, we get to the running totals, and here you can see that you're going to add those gray columns up, and you're going to get the... Um, you can see this first row here is total for this log, so how many of each type of hour did you get on the log? Then you're going to do a running total, and this is where you take what was on log one, you add it to what was on log two, and that's your grand total. And then you're going to take what's on log two, add it to log three to get your running total. And you're going to keep doing this. Um, you do it for all those, and the final one gives you the grand total of your supervision hours and direct service hours. And this is why having the correct log number at the top of the row, may, uh, at the top of the, the, the log is so important because that's why you only have one log one because you're going to add it to log two. And then log two, you get a running total, you're going to add to log three, and so on. So uh, just to kind of put this out and maybe it's clearer here, but you're totaling up all the far right gray columns to get the, the running total for the, the totals for these logs of all the different types of specialty hours. And you're going to add it to the prior logs, and then you, that's going to give you your direct service. So you'll always have all your information, your summary of, from all the sites, and all your supervisors are going to be there at the bottom of that form. And that is why it's so important you fill that out when you turn it in to your supervisor. So finally, I want to share my guiding, um, my general guiding principle, which is watch this video, log some hours, and then repeat. And most um, students tell me they need to have this lecture told to them three to five times before it all finally makes sense. And you need to be out in the field trying to gather hours and trying to figure out where to put it in which column, where, in which row does this go in? Um, so that's just part of the learning process and it begins to make a lot more sense after a few months of doing this. But certainly um, it is pretty much standard practice to have to watch and listen to this a few times, go practice, go back and forth, and then finally, I promise you, it will all make sense um, sooner than you think. So hopefully you found this useful, getting um, used to using the CSUN uh, logs uh, for graduation. These, will, these are the logs we use to tell whether or not you are ready to graduate. Best of luck. Take care.